Rock, report range status. Range green. 25. ECS reduced for launch. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Space Force 7. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, there's ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with USSF-7 for the United States Space Force on a mission dedicated to America Strong. Good. Party 180 has gone to closed loop propellant utilization control. You are hearing the voice of Rob Kesselman providing Vehicle launch vehicle begun. ascent data. The pitch our roll program. Vehicle body rates look good. Now, 35 seconds into flight. Atlas is now just under one mile in altitude. Traveling at 900 miles per hour. Engine pump speeds and injector pressures are in family for this thrust level. The vehicle has now completed the pitch yaw roll program. RD-180 is now throttling down slightly as commanded. Pump speed response looks good. We have Pico booster engine cutoff. Standing by for stage separation. Stage set, we have successful stage separation. We have ignition, mess one. Centaur has now begun the first of two RL-10 burns in today's mission. Recently, I had a chance to speak with Boeing's Jim Chilton about the X-37B. Jim was over in Boeing's Mission Control Center at the Kennedy Space Center. Let's take a look. Thanks for joining me, Jim. As you know, this is a special launch dedicated to first responders. Would you like to address that to kick us off? Hi, Tyler. Thanks for having me. And by the way, thanks for getting another great Atlas V to the launch pad to give us a ride. I, I would like to respond to it. In these challenging times, it's never been more clear the importance of first responders to our whole society. And I'd also like to add a thanks to the women and men in uniform because our U.S. defense posture hasn't changed and they haven't backed off of it either. In the context of this being a classified program, what can you share with us about what the X-37B is and does? Well, X-37B is a really interesting machine. It's a reu reusable spacecraft. It is autonomous. It flies without crew. It can be rapidly reconfigured to host a wide variety of experiments. And it can take off from standard launch pads in standard rockets under fairings. And it can land autonomously through public airspace. You add all that up, it's, there's a lot of innovation in this machine. This is the sixth mission for the X-37B orbital test vehicle. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the program? History of the program is that Boeing developed this as a system for the U.S. Air Force, and it's flown five times. Each flight has been successively longer, setting a record for, for uh, duration. The last flight was 780 days, start to finish, which is a long time in space. If you add up all the missions, uh, just under eight years in orbit and a billion miles. So a lot of traveling by this machine. Uh, it's hosted a wide variety of experiments and kind of advanced the state of the art in both reusable vehicles and the experiments she can host. Tell us some of the unique firsts for this mission. This mission is really interesting in that it's the first time we've flown a service module. And the service module extends the vehicle capability. We can host more payloads that way. So, so this is the most we've ever carried on an X-37B mission. One of the things we're carrying on that service module, which can release independent satellites, is a satellite built by, designed and built by the cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy. So they've built it, we'll release it, and they'll get, they'll get a lot of learning out of that and a lot of science. Uh, there's a couple other things I find real interesting on this one. The Naval Research Lab has an experiment to turn solar energy into RF energy that can be beamed to Earth. Very early research kind of project, but long-term great potential. 
very exciting and kind of thing this machine was built to do. And even NASA, in this, in this, this machine is a great blend of defense and research. NASA has a seed experiment on this flight. And the idea is they've collected a lot of data on the space station around radiation effects on seeds. Long-term human trips would require some agriculture. X-37B can go some places the station doesn't go, collect different kind of radiation, and our payload bay can be a different kind of shielding. So they'll get more data to complete their set. Some might say the X-37B looks similar to a space shuttle. What are some of those similarities and differences? Well, a similarity is the shape. You could say that the X-37B stands on the shoulders of the space shuttle. It is a winged re-entry vehicle. It's about a quarter, 25% scale of a space shuttle. An interesting fact a lot of people don't know is we modified the orbiter processing facilities. The actual hangars the space shuttles flew in and out of are the homes of the X-37B. So that, you know, that's pretty interesting from a common shape to a common home in the hangar. Uh, differences, the X-37B is autonomous. The X-37B is more rapidly reconfigurable. And, you know, frankly, the challenge of coming down through the public airspace without crew has been overcome and proven to work well. Also, uh, the difference is the duration X-37B can fly. You know, our last mission was 780 days, and that's just a lot longer than a shuttle could stay aloft. What have you learned in the past five missions that could be applied to the industry moving forward? I would say the learning on X-37B over the last five missions is that we can advance the whole space ecosystem with rapid learning. Perfect for the U.S. Space Force. If you think about our ability to put small or large payloads into this vehicle, test them, and then bring them home and find out how they worked, that's really beneficial. The benefit is you don't have to commit to a large single satellite with its own launch or a constellation of satellites to know if something works. The, the benefits can be improving high technology. The benefits can also be improving, if you want to try to go with a lower reliability design, for instance, to prove that small sats could do missions traditionally done by other space vehicles. So the flexibility this offers the US Space Force to advance the whole ecosystem. You know, all of industry and all the, the government research labs is terrific. So Jim, anything you'd like to add in closing? I'd like to add a big thanks to the U.S. Space Force, along with a congratulations. My personal appreciation for the Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, for the partnership and frankly the leadership in helping us get to this mission. I'm very grateful for my partners at ULA and the terrific ride, another great Atlas V. And, uh, you know, a special thanks to the Boeing team that worked very hard to make this mission come off. We're all ready here together because of you. Thanks, Jim, for joining us today. I appreciate it, Tyler. Thank you.